All right, let's see the time value of money questions. First question, let's see. There's a table given the current information. Now, if I'm looking at a long question like this, I'll go through the options, the actual question first, and then go through the data. Uh, obviously, in exam in level one, we do not expect very uh, lengthy questions and all like this. Uh, at times, practice ke liye, they might have given you non-MCQ questions. That is just for practice and for your concept clarity. Exam, obviously, is going to be MCQ. Um, so you don't have to worry on that. Let's see, based on the information in the table, explain difference between interest rates on investments one and two. So we've got two investments. One and two, if you see, investments have the same maturity. Investment one has a higher liquidity or liquidity risk? Liquidity. So investment one, if I'm comparing with investment... One and two, maturity is same. Liquidity is higher in which one? one? First one. So this liquidity is higher. So therefore required return is going to be lower for this one. I'm not writing from that point of view. I'm writing from the required return point of view. So I'm going to be looking at what is going to be the RE. RE is going to be lower for liquidity risk. Because liquidity is higher, liquidity risk premium is lower. Next difference is interest rate is two, two and a half. Achha. What is the question? Explain the difference between interest rate on investment one and investment two. Higher liquidity, lower required return. This is two, this is two and a half. So the half a percent return is actually representing the liquidity risk premium. I'm assuming everything else equal credit risk, etc. And default risk anyways is same, both are low. It's a very basic question. It's just trying to tell you how the required return and all we look at for different investments and all. I did not even have to read the entire passage above the table. Next, estimate the default risk premium. Okay, default risk premium, how do I estimate? I have to look at a combination. Let's see. If I'm looking at investments four and five. Okay, I need two investments with different liquidity risk. So if I'm looking at the, uh, sorry, differently, a uh, default risk premium, I have to look at the last two investments because last two investments have a high and low default risk. The default risk for all the investments, one, two, three, four are the same. So I cannot make any comparison. When I'm looking at investment four and investment five, there is a gap of two and a half percent, right? Investment four and investment five. So if I'm looking at investments four and five, what is the rate? This one has a four and six and a half so there is a gap of 2.5 out of which liquidity is also there now half a percent we've calculated now which one will have a higher liquidity this one has higher liquidity so this one is supposed to be having a half a percent lower return than this one so this two and a half extra that you're getting half you should be getting so over here 0.5 extra is for liquidity risk right this is high liquidity, low liquidity risk premium. This is low liquidity, therefore higher liquidity risk premium. So compared to four, assume if they had the same default risk, I would have demanded four and a half over here. They are the same maturity. So there is no difference in terms of maturity risk. They have the same maturity. There is no difference in terms of maturity risk. I am going to be demanding instead of four, I'm going to be demanding four and a half percent over here. Yes or no? Yes. Everyone. But I'm actually demanding six and a half. So therefore this two percent extra is because of the default risk premium. Because otherwise, there is no difference between the two security. They have the same maturity risk. So same maturity risk premium. And that's why probably from 2 to 2.5%, we've gone up to 4 to 6.5%. The 2 to 2.5 has gone to 4% because of that maturity risk only. Let's see. Next line. Calculate the uh, next, next part of the question. Calculate the upper and lower limits for the interest rate on investment 3. Okay, lower and upper limit. Investment 3 has 7 years maturity. It has low liquidity and low default risk premium. Now, if I compare investment two and investment three, the only difference over here is with respect to maturity. So investment three has to have at least two and a half percent return. It cannot be below that because if it is two and a half, even if it is two and a half percent, will you invest in investment two or three? Two. two. So up to two and a half percent investment two is better than three. Beyond 2.5%, you have to be compensated for maturity risk. So investment 3, the minimum rate you are going to be providing is 2.5%. It's low liquidity, right? Next, if I'm looking at it, investment 3 to investment 4, if I see, 
the only difference one is of course maturity the only uh, the other difference is high liquidity investment four is high liquidity but this one has low liquidity now let's assume apart from the seven year maturity if i want to make the liquidity also the same as an in investment three investment four if you see investment three four what are the two differences one the maturity has increased from seven to eight years so i'm definitely going to demand a higher return uh, for investment four as compared to three yes. eight years maturity i'll demand a higher return but the four percent includes Achha, liquidity is high sorry liquidity is high if the liquidity was low it would have been four and a half percent if the liquidity investment four with handle just just focus on investment four if i want to make investment four very much like investment three the liquidity over here in investment four liquidity is high then the return is four percent if the liquidity was low the investment the return would have been four and a half percent if the liquidity was low four and a half percent so therefore for investment three i will not get more than four and a half percent at any cost because at four and a half percent it's eight year maturity it's high uh, it's low liquidity in that case basically i'm converting investment four if you see investment four is everything is same except it is low liquid uh, it is high liquidity and eight years and minus seven year and low liquidity so obviously because of seven year this has to be higher but because of high liquidity this has to be lower so right now i'm not being able to say for sure that whether i want investment three or a four because for investment three this because of this i'm okay with a lower return but because of this i want a higher return so i i cannot compare i cannot say for sure that which one is going to be higher which one is going to be lower because one factor is making this better one factor is making this better so what i do is if i convert this high liquidity into low liquidity i'm converting four to a four and a half percent so at four and a half percent it's a eight year thing it's a low liquidity thing except eight year, everything is comparable now if there are two investments one is seven years one is eight years and both is giving you a high four percent four and a half percent return obviously you're going to go for which one this one seven year because the maturity risk will be lower so my range should be somewhere around two and a half to four and a half just check what's the solution given for all the three is it okay right comfortable we'll move to the next question i wouldn't categorize this as a very easy question especially the third part but it's okay i mean this just to warm up so that you guys get comfortable next question nominal risk free rate is best described as a sum of real risk free rate and a premium for inflation we already know this nominal is equal to real plus inflation which is a very casual way of putting the formula a very more accurate way would be one plus nominal is equal to one plus real into one plus inflation but casually we do write nominal rate is equal to real plus inflation right so inflation expected inflation is coming from here actually uh, i don't want to confuse you right now but it's given expected inflation over here now understand a little bit over here say suppose i i am just giving you a little extra over here you'll study this somewhere or some subject or the other later you'll, you'll be looking at this part today is time zero this is one year suppose i invest a hundred and assume i want a real rate of three percent okay i want a real rate of three percent my inflation is let's say four percent okay this is your inflation so therefore i am demanding 107 over here ignore the 1.03 into 1.04 part right now 3 plus 4 approx 7 percent so 100 investment is supposed to become 107 at the end of the year out of that 107 4 is going to be inflation so 103 3 percent is the extra i can buy but that is only possible if the inflation rate is exactly four percent but what will be the four uh, in, uh, inflation rate in one year period can you guarantee from today no this is expected inflation or actual inflation A expected inflation uh, inflation because actual inflation to 107 you'll get to know after year one so there is also a risk 
because if the inflation is higher let's say five percent you will be left with a real return of only two but yes there is also a possibility that if the inflation is three and the government has managed to keep the inflation levels low in that case your real return becomes four percent got the idea now do you understand why people want lower levels of inflation and also we would want our money not to erode in value the same thousand rupee two thousand rupee note that is lying in my wallet is the value of that is going to change without me doing anything wrong at least over here in india we do not have that level of printing of currency that has been done in the us because of which they are facing really very bad levels of inflation and bad monetary policy right so so expected inflation that's why it's nominally is equal to real plus expected inflation got it next question which of the following risk premiums is most relevant in explaining the difference in yields between 30 year bond and 30 year bond issued by a private issuer of course it's very easy okay i would want to go for default but i was thinking i mean the first thing that came to my mind was default risk so when I'm looking at a 30 year treasury security, that is a US government bond. So the government bond will be risk free because they can always get the money printed, which they have been doing very uh, wonderfully well. So that is there. And the 30 year bond issued by a small private issuer, there is a probability that a private issuer, small private issuer can default. The probability of a, a Infosys or a TCS defaulting is low and a probability of an XYZ a uh, 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 private limited company defaulting is higher smaller company lesser resources infosys and also you know uh, so many analysts are analyzing it if there is any kind of a problem people will try to bring it out there's more public data available it's a listed company now so there is so much of data information available about that company so private company small company versus a treasury stock we are going to be looking at a higher level of default risk but the options given over here are inflation maturity liquidity there's nothing to do with maturity because both are 30 year securities inflation has also got nothing to do over here because we're talking about yields i'm assuming they're nominal yields both are and there's nothing mentioned that one is one's return is real terms one is inflation etc terms liquidity is going to be a challenge obviously a private small company's bonds or loans are going to be more difficult to sell than a u.s treasury bond a risky security will be less liquid now a risky security any which ways is going to be less liquid tell me comfortable so liquidity but if the same question had default and liquidity both as options so if i give you an option default liquidity and maturity let's say your answer will be default because the default is a much 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 more important factor as compared to this got it and second if i give you the option default liquidity both of the above then the answer is going to be both of the above getting it next the value Achha, I'll pause once.